Hello there, I'm Black Bright, and I'm broadcasting out of the UK into your homes, onto your phones and into your life. Um, welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, I do hope you like what I talk about. And if you do, put the thumbs up. And if you don't, you put the thumbs down. And you can share and you can subscribe. And yeah, you know the drill. Um, I wanted to talk about the disproportionate um of blacks dying against whites of the coronavirus. Now, because I'm black, I hear about a lot of black people dying. And, you know, I don't know about white people because it's not like I've got mates at work who are saying, oh, you know, this person died, that person died. I've heard about um, them saying that they've got symptoms, but I haven't actually heard about them dying. But as a black person, for me, it came like all of a sudden black people were dropping like flies. Anyway, I said to myself, you know, don't get paranoid. You don't know the proportion of deaths. So I just let it slide. Anyway, um, I got an email this morning and it was sharing the Washington Post um, statistics on black people dying as opposed to white people dying of the coronavirus and it's ironic because last night I had well early hours of the morning I had been um, I've, I've found something similar but it wasn't by the Washington Post and then this morning I found something by the Guardian and I'm like isn't it weird how everything is just coming together at the same time anyway I'm going to read what um, the sources say and then I'm going to tell you why I think black people are dying over and above white people. You may agree, you may not, but this is just my opinion. Okay, so the Washington Post recently reported the disproportionate amount of black deaths versus white deaths due to the coronavirus. In Milwaukee County, um, African Americans account for about 70% of the dead, but just 26% of the population. In Louisiana, 70% of deaths were black, while blacks are only 32% of that state's population. It is also disproportionate, I believe, in Michigan, Illinois, Chicago, Detroit, New York and New Jersey. I'm not 100% sure about those last ones, but I think I read somewhere that the proportion was still um, was still leaning more towards black people dying more than whites. Anyway, apart from underlying symptoms, many black people's diets is being considered as a contrib contributory factor. Whilst they traditionally eat food cooked from scratch, a lot of the time there's too much oil, salt factors in their recipes. So could the combination of the food and the underlying symptoms make them a target? That is what's being put out there. Okay. So various sources claim that African Americans have higher rates of diabetes, heart disease and lung disease. The Louisiana governor, John Bell Edwards, Democrat, noted that those health problems make people more vulnerable to the new respiratory disease, but adds, there's never been a pandemic that brought the disparities so vividly into focus. Okay, so what's happening in the UK? That's America. According to The Guardian, the trend is similar, which is no surprise. I wrote this out because I didn't want to miss anything. Okay, so this is my comments, my notes on what's going on, um, which is no surprise as UK tends to mirror America in most things. So I've been curious about the ratio for some time, especially since so many people I have been informed about are black. So it is interesting that it has now been brought out into the open. Statistics aren't even accurate. There are probably more than reported because apparently Health departments nationwide report coronaviruses to the CDC using a standardised form that asks for a range of demographic information, including race and ethnicity. However, those fields are often left blank. 
I wonder if they're left blank conveniently so. Blaming pressure and strain to collect the data. How long does it take to put a tick? You've already put the person's name. You've already put why they're dead or what, why they, yeah, why they've died. What is it just to tick a box to say they're black, they're African, African Caribbean, or they're white? I don't think they wanted to raise the alarm bells of the disproportionality of deaths in favour of blacks. I don't think they wanted to raise that. So that is probably why they haven't been ticked because you know this is a country that thrives on information thrives on record keeping they have to have all their records straight they want to know about statistics and numbers so why in such an important aspect the ethnicity and race of the deceased is not recorded in many cases so for all we know there are tons more and how do we know if there are people missing? I wonder if you know of anybody missing who's just kind of disappeared off of the map. And they could be one of these people that have not been accounted for because there's no tick against how many black. I mean, even if they put a tick about on who's black and who's white, it's still not going to assign them to a name. You're still not going to know who's who, but it will still give us a better picture of exactly how many blacks are dying over whites. And I'm going to give you my reasoning in a minute. People are constantly accusing us for having a chip on our shoulder, saying we are paranoid, etc., etc. But when the statistics evidence our fears, can we be blamed for being paranoid? In the UK, the Intensive Care Medical Audit and Research Centre found that 35% of almost 2,000 patients were non-white, nearly triple the 13% proportion in the UK's population as a whole. According to The Guardian yesterday, black and minority ethnics are harder hit. We have been warned about the prioritisation of life, so we should not be surprised. The young over the elderly the healthy over those who have underlying health conditions, and who has the underlying health conditions, or who has more underlying health conditions. Haven't they told us black people have more underlying health conditions than white people? Haven't we been told that? I don't know how it's managed or how it's worked out, but that is what we've been told. Black people have more underlying symptoms than white people. And who are they saving? They're saving the ones without the underlying health symptoms, health problems over those who are healthy. This is how they're prioritising who should be left to die, or should I say who should be given a ventilator over who shouldn't. The majority, 60, uh, the, mo the median number is 61 years of age, 75% of them are men. 75%. Now, if it's hitting black people, why is it only hitting the black men? 75%. A study of 286 critical care units in England, Wales and Northern Ireland with confirmed COVID-19 up until 12 noon on the 3rd of April, found that the median age was 61 years old and almost 75% were men. I think that's the same study from the um, black and minority ethnic. Um, was it that? What was that? Um, I always do that, don't I? No, it was the UK and Intensive Care National Audit. I think that was the um, survey. Um, but don't quote me on it. I, but I think it is. I think it is that though. So what I would like to know to allay my fears and to allay my paranoia is, one, how are the black people who are dying of the disease ending up in the hospital? Are they self-admitting? 
or are they being brought into the hospital? And if so, by whom? I don't think you're allowed, I don't think people in the house are allowed to carry them in. So who's carrying them into the hospital? That's my first question. My second question is, if there is a shortage of testing equipment, how are they being tested? We keep hearing about these people being tested for COVID-19 and testing positive for COVID-19. How are they being tested? And how do we know, number three, that the test isn't exacerbating their underlying conditions or their pre-existing conditions? How do we know that that test, whatever it is, is not exacerbating their condition and that is why they're dying? We don't know, do we? So we, we also need to take into consideration that we have been weaned. We have been warned that over those over a certain age with underlying conditions are low priority over those who are younger and healthier. So it makes sense that blacks over 60 with underlying health problems will be left to die, i.e., the priority isn't for them to get a ventilator. Like I said the other day, um, a couple of people, they were white though, they were told they will not be given a ventilator. So similarly, the same will apply to these black people. The only difference is, is that if blacks have more underlying problems, that is why it's going to be disproportionate. That is why there's going to be more black people who are left to die than white people. And that is why there's a disparity. That's just my opinion, because to me, that would make sense. And it's consistent in what they're telling us, because they are telling us that those with pre-existing conditions are more prone to get onto critical care, develop pneumonia and all of that. They're more likely to pass away than those who are healthier and younger and so forth. So I don't know if you think this makes sense, um, but I don't think um, somebody was blaming cramped housing and poverty. I think that's a cop out. Because those ones that, I, that I've seen who were dying, who, who, who deceased, they were definitely not on the poverty line. Definitely not. I mean, one was an esteemed um, record producer known all over the all over the country. Delroy Washington was an esteemed black man. And healthy. Well, he was healthy when I saw him last year. I think it was about um, maybe about June last summer. It's over a year ago. But, I mean, I saw him, he was at a funeral, and he seemed perfectly normal. I mean, the thing is, you don't know what pe underlying um, things that symptoms people have. I, I appreciate that. But definitely not poverty, and I, I'm definitely not overcrowding. I'm not saying there aren't some um, families that are overcrowding, like they're saying that the UK, Bangladeshi community and Pakistani families, they tend to be um, more, cra more crowded in the home and they tend to um, not practice social distancing. But I think most, for the most part, until you put a black man in a dance or a black woman in a dance, you know, for the most time, they're pretty cool. They're not like they're up in a, you know, it's not like you're into everybody's space or you're in this situation where everybody's on top of each other. So I don't think that's a valid reason to say why, why all these black people are dying. Apparently Asian rates of death are high as well. So, um, yeah, I think their claims are based on assumptions that the majority of people of colour lived in cramped conditions, are poor, and cannot socially distance themselves. I think they think we're all up in each other's grill. And that's not the case. And when it comes down to ethnicity, a white person's life with no underlying conditions will be perceived as more valuable over a black person's life with pre-existing conditions. 
when it comes to choosing who should get the ventilator. So personally, sad to say, it is evident from the statistics that those with underlying conditions are not being given the opportunity to survive. And since it is black people who are more likely to have underlying or pre-existing conditions, they are the ones who are, who are being sacrificed, in my opinion. So, that's all I really want to say. The only thing is, is that, um, as we know, no, I'm going to do that in another video. So, yeah, that's it. I wonder if you think that my thoughts are valid, because I think it makes, it makes sense without having any kind of conspiracy theory, without feeling paranoid about everything. To me, how I view this situation, I think it makes a bit of sense. Let me know what you think. That's all for now. Bye-bye.